So welcome back. It's been a little while. And this has happened. <laughs> At last. So um, I took brake spear out. I was just doing some wiring on it, finishing the wiring off on it at last. Took brake spear out for thought, oh, while it's out, something I've been meaning to do for a long time and I keep putting off is take hair foot out so I know that they'll match up without the in-between part. <laughs> and uh, lo and behold, it doesn't come out. Uh, <laughs> so I've made an error. When I created the board down this end, with the elevated section. See that? I was meant to cut a notch out for that. And because I forgot, yeah, there is not enough room for the layout to slide that way and for the dowels to come out. <laughs> so the whole lot's got to come apart. And just by pot luck, the extension board that I put in, I didn't put the dowels in because it didn't actually come with the dowels or the boards that they screw into. So handily that can come out. Um, I'll take that out of the cabin. Then the center can probably stay where it is. I mean, I might flip it on its end so I can check the wiring and stuff and just go over some bits. And then finally the end piece can come out. But to do this, <laughs> I've had to make it look like a bomb's gone off. There is stuff everywhere. You can see, uh, where the rest of the layout is missing. It's all piled up in the garden. <laughs> so I hope it doesn't rain tonight because that's a lot of damp wood if it does. Um, so I'm gonna take the lot out and then basically start again. Um, the only saving grace is because I can get this board out on its own, I can take hair foot out and I can pull the whole rear board out in one go because now that it's all together, it's all in basically one nine foot piece which won't come apart anymore. So I wasn't able to just to take the three by two corner board out anymore. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna take this apart, cause an absolute mess, and then we'll come back. So the layout's out now. One thing I have done, which is a bit of a mistake, is this frame needs to stop here and there'll be nothing in this area. The reason for that is because attaching that and that together with this frame i know it's not a very good one but kind of does the job um means that it can't come apart when i want to take the layout apart so although the main issue was over here this also wasn't helping so what i'm going to do as i say i'm going to cut it here so that this board is supported the center board is supported which sits here um and that'll go to there and then I might leave this one over here floating. Either that or I'll just make some more legs for this corner and then tie it together that way so that it's actually separate from this piece. That will allow it all to move and uh, it will sort of jiggle about so that I can get it all running true. Because that's another problem I've got is I've basically just lashed it all up at the minute and uh, that board across the back isn't actually level because the back of it is still on a baton across the wall and as I found out, this cabin expands and contracts a lot, so I can't be having that. So I'm going to have to put legs in the back the corners as well. I'm not sure if I was going to put block detection in on this section. Um, I wasn't planning on it, I was going to plan on just doing it basic. Block detection was just going to be on the scenic areas that will go to shows, but we'll see. But yeah, so now I've got to try and obviously clear all this out. And enough so that I can bring this whole board forwards this way enough for me to stand behind it because I do need to also sort the legs out because the legs um, I messed all that up and it was all a bit of an afterthought so I need to get behind it so I can screw the legs in to the battens and stuff because at the minute they're just pushed under and the weight of it just holds them in place I mean it's all fairly level 
but it was not ideal. And also it needs a couple more battens across. So this board needs a batten across that way. And this long board here needs a batten across that way, maybe this way as well. And that two by two in the corner probably needs one across it as well. So the plan is do, the, do that all. And obviously I'll have to put a bus in here as well, which I could probably do when it's in situ to be fair, just to get it back in. Um, it'd be easier rather than have everything outside in the garden. But that's gonna be the plan. And then push that back against the wall. I wanna cut enough of a notch out so this can actually go solidly against the wall. I might have to look at the other end as well because I think there's another little bit up there was, that was stopping things. But I've got a lot to do. <laughs> so, oh dear. I took the end board off here. It was just screwed through there into here, which was plenty strong enough in that sense. However, as I was explaining, I need a brace to go across the center to stop the board sagging in the middle. And I also need to put a few screws in these legs. because I think one of them, no, it's not on this one. Actually, it's on this, it's on this leg here. It's not actually screwed in to the board because I couldn't get behind it. Like that, see, so it was just pushed in there and its own weight basically held it on. But uh, I'll probably put an actual leg. Actually, you know, well, if I'm gonna screw that back into here, I don't really need to. Um, so I'll probably leave it as it is in that sense, just strengthen them legs up and obviously you brace it. And on this one, I'm gonna use the thin leg there. Um, I believe I, at the time I ran out of this wood, so I just used this and I've obviously forgotten about it. So I'm gonna replace that with another section of this. So it's nice and solid, screw it directly through here. So it's proper rock hard, none of this rubbish. And I might also have to notch out the bottom like that. However, if I'm gonna find the rest of my adjustable feet and put it on this side, I might get away with that. Um, down there you can see it's much the same. I've got a proper leg on the front and just a rubbish one on the back. So I'll do the same again. Um, and I need to brace the center of this board, stop it sagging, because this is a five foot board, this center piece. Uh, so I need some bracing across there, maybe a center leg as well. I might do that just in case. Um, the only saving grace is that this is 10 centimeter wide, rough sawn wood, hardwood. So this shouldn't really bow uh, because it's plenty thick enough. However, you never know. So it's worth doing it while it's straight. <laughs> um, and then you see the three by two board that's at the end. So this one here, that's also got no legs on that side. Um, I mean, that far corner was supported by the board that was next to it. So I basically just needed a leg in the back corner. But while it's all out, I'll put some legs on that end because due to the gradient, I don't want that to separate. I want it, I want this to stay as a seven foot long board, which is a bit excessive, but it will do because I don't want to have any problems across where the join would be with derailments. This section here is quite a big bit to cut out. So what I'll do is I'll cut a nice big notch. The reason it's gonna be this big, where the board was sitting, I need this bit cut out, but the board, due to the width of the cabin, the board has enough room to slide left and right, just so you can get the layout all square. And uh, I'll need that much of a cut out for it to be able to slide wall to wall. So I might as well do it while I'm there, rather than the little cut out that's probably gonna be in the wrong place. So I'll cut down there, down there, take this section of wood out, take that out with a multi-tool, come back with another piece of this and go, on the inside of it to strengthen it up. And then I'll put the leg in and that should be mint. Right, the cavalry are coming. Ross and James are on their way over to help with this. Been to b and got some CDS um, wood. Doing the top level on there. Got some more 44 by 44 for doing the legs and some screws and fasteners and things and bits and bobs. So hopefully we can get this knocked out and get this board standing on its own properly and then work our way back from there. So, I mean, even if we just get this board back against the wall, that's uh, more than enough progress. And then I can crack on with the rest. But uh, yeah, they're gonna be here soon and then we'll crack on and see what happens.
So it's a bit of a mess in here again. But Ross and James kindly came over last night and gave me a hand. So we pulled all of this board out. We separated this board from the little corner one. We had it up on its back. We have fitted new legs on the whole thing. We've also braced the long section this way and we've braced this one front to back. So that's all now nice and strong and solid. I mean, there's a few things on top of it at the minute, but it shouldn't go anywhere now. It's nice and solid in there. Also, we have notched the back out there. There's a nice big notch in there and there's another bit of wood that goes in front. It's so basically the wood that goes across the back of the board comes out and then we've got a bit that goes around here and then there so there's no like unsupported piece so it's all nice and solid in there still so i have now got to tackle this framework this was just a bodge up piece because didn't have enough wood left over um that section from there to there is okay however i need to sort out these legs this leg needs replacing for the same type as this and a decent brace making I need to sort of triangulate it rather than square it off so it's a bit stronger. And I might move the legs down that way a bit so they're out of the way of the plug socket. But yeah, I basically just put that bit of brake spear in just to sort of give me an idea. And you can see as well where the layout has now moved to its proper place at the back. We've got a really big gap now at the back of here, which gives me plenty of room to get a back seam board in. Obviously coming up here, but also have enough space to clear the window that will in turn help massively with where the lift out section is because the lift out uh, the hinge section sorry didn't actually fit properly because the layout was all skewed over because basically that corner was against the wall and that corner stuck out the layout never went together properly and it was always sort of a bit of a squeeze to get it to fit together so that's really going to help now but yeah um, ross james if you're watching this i'm massively in your debt thank you so much and uh, now I can get cracking and get it all back in, make it nice and strong and go from there. Right, progress update. I've had all of this back out again, separated the two boards and I've gone ahead and fitted this back seam board, which is three mil sort of chipboard stuff, some here. Um, three mil hardboard, sorry. Uh, it's nice and flexible, so you can bend it quite easily. It's from B&Q, so what I've done here is, so it comes down the same depth as this, so obviously it can screw to the back of the baseboards. And then over here, I've gone one foot in, and then I've basically cut down, and cut down there as well. So then basically the bottom of it goes across, and it's got a big cut out, and then it carries on. That allows the board to oh, ignore my blurry camera one sec there we go sorry my phone's naked that allows that board to sit and curve on top of the actual baseboard and then drop back down the rear again and then that goes across into that corner which won't matter too much because i do want to put a hillside there but yeah from here you can see it should give a nice curve back scene and it's starting away from the curve here as well so that the background can come in but um, for now, I'm happy with how this board is sitting. I'm pretty pleased with it. The rest of it is all top level, which I can do as and when with it in situ. Um, so now I'm gonna once again put that framework back in. I'm gonna level that all up, get it sort of nice and straight, and then we'll start putting brakes spear back, and then we'll tackle hair foot behind me. But so far, so good. And I'm really pleased with how that back scene's gonna look. Even if I just paint it white or blue or something, as people usually do, it's going to look a lot neater than what was there, well, what wasn't there before. And uh, obviously it means I don't have to stick a back scene to the back of the cabin, because you can't do that anyway, as I found out, because of the cabin's expansion and contraction. All right, that's the support there sorted out now. This side I'm pretty happy with, so I've redone the legs there. They're a lot stronger now. And I've uh, also moved them over a bit so they're out the way of the plug socket. A couple of braces in between, put another brace um, along the bottom of there because that's in two halves because that's one long length of wood. So uh, it's a lot more solid now. So I'm going to put brake spear back on and then tomorrow I'm going to make a start on Harefield because I've got to go to work soon. So I skipped ahead a bit. 
I can't remember where I got up to last time, but this side's all done and is in. Now I'm making a new frame for Harefield side of the layout. So this is CLS this time, instead of the softwood I was using before, because it was a bit naff. So I am basically just made this frame here, which should hopefully be square, considering I use the baseboard to go around. Baseboard should sit on top of that. Um, there should be a lip sticking out for this board of Harefield. So we'll have two boards on there and then one floating. And then uh, obviously that board going between that board and this board. We'll hold it all together and stop it falling out. And uh, it will obviously sit on the lip anyway. So I'm going to get a 4x2 board in here now and bolt it onto here. Just to check the level. I'll use this little chest of drawers I've got and some packing pieces to get the level right on the sort of deck and then I'll make some legs to support it all. Then I'll have to take it all back out again so that I can screw the legs in from the outside and hopefully that will do the job. So you can see what I'm doing here. I've got this plain four by two board with no back seam. It's a lot smaller to manhandle. So bolt that in position, got the level on there. Cut packing pieces and uh, now I know the height where I can screw the frame into the board this way. And then I can start making some legs over there and in the corner, in the middle, sorry. So yeah, it should work nicely. So just making the legs for the frame for Harefield now. As you can see, I've got no idea what I'm doing. I've cut a 45 in at the back because there's a little skirting board that gets in the way otherwise, as I found out on this one over here, because the layout wouldn't sit flat. I realized it was actually sitting on that little lip you can see, so I'll cut that out. Um, I need to order some more of these feet. So these are gonna, are gonna be slightly too short, so the level's gonna be just a touch off for now until I put feet on. So I'll get some of those ordered and get that sorted soon. Um, and I'm just trying to sort of brace it to stop it all wobbling and now it's pretty good. So obviously you can see up there, what I had before, just the two legs going up and then they're quite wobbly. Well, they're not too bad, but they're not quite straight either. And then I've just put a piece across the centre to brace them together that way. Then um, another piece down that way of um, thinner, slightly thinner stuff that I've got loads spare of from the original frame I made or bodged so I put that that way that helps support this piece and keeps that all nice and solid because there's a screw in each leg and a screw in this so it just triangulates it all and then to stop it going forwards and back I put this piece on which will be at the rear where the wall is so it won't get in the way of anything um, so I'll just have one at the rear the front I won't bother with because obviously it'll get in the way of uh, my seat my uh, office chair and sitting your legs under it um, and that should hopefully do the job. I mean, it's not the best bit of carpentry you'll ever see, but it'd be more than adequate for what I need here. And then I'm just gonna replicate what I've done here over there. Um, and then this can all go back in, two of the layout boards can come in, and then it's just a case of sorting the piece over there before the final piece can come in. So there we go, two of the layout boards are back in. The frames are there, and you can see the little lip that sticks out to help support the next module. I'm gonna have the same on this end. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of that and redo it. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, it's uh, in, it's a lot stronger. Um, obviously it's all a bit wonky at the minute because I need to put feet on, I need to order some. Um, but that should then square it up nice. Goes up here, bounce up against there nicely. And uh, I think I'm gonna take the plunge now, get the multi-tool and I'm gonna cut this out. <laughs> it's about time. So you can see there we've got hair filled. Um, we've now cut this piece through. So it's all one sort of open area, 12 foot long. Obviously we've got a lot of scenery, scenery to do. I've got to make brand new platforms so that they sit lower as well, rather than just extend these because they're rubbish. Um, and obviously extend the embankment across. Um, <laughs> there's gonna be so much work to do, honestly. I'm not looking forward to it, um, but it'll look a lot better for it. Um, what else? Oh yeah, down this end. If I go over the top, the scissor crossing is gone. So I'm just putting a pair of right hand points in, uh, just so you can come from this line across to the station and that. So the scissor is remaining, but it's going on brake spear instead. So it's sitting here. There is another main line to go in. Um, see the track's missing. I've had to rejig 
the tracks here as well so they're not all glued down properly just the end sleeper is so that it matches up with hairfield properly um did that earlier that was a nightmare um but yeah we are getting there um the main thing now is getting allowed to a position where i can run trains from this end all the way round to breakspear and then i need to also think about what i'm going to do with this area five hours later moment of truth Oh, the track's dirty <laughs> under there, for Christ's sake. So the railway is all back in. All three Hairfield boards are in, brake spears in. And as you can see, I finally got a loop running. So yeah, as I said, Hairfield's now back in here. And just to show you what I was on about before, uh, it's quite a while ago now where I was on about doing the framework and that. So you can see there that the frame underneath, which is uh, CLS um, timbers, it sits nicely and it just overlaps enough so that the left hand side of the has got a little lip to sit on when uh, you place it in. If I move the sofa, I've done the same this side. Um, this leg needed replacing. This um, setup has had to have legs sorted out for it. You'll notice they're also notched out because of this little sort of skirting board bit that goes around the cabin. That was a bit of a pain because I put it all in there, then realized I couldn't put it up against the wall. <laughs> um, but yeah. So this part of Hairfield's got a lip to sit on, but it's no actual frame underneath. It just kind of sits there and supports itself. Um, but it works quite nice. The only thing I've had to do is take the dowels out of this one so that you can just slot the board straight in. Um, naturally, this is gonna be the one I take out the most because it has to join up with this board here. So I have to take that out for a bit of trial and error. So it's easiest if that one can come out rather than having to take it out from that end first. So I've basically swapped it all around. Um, yeah, <laughs> quite a lot though. Um, turning around to brake spear, you can see brake spear I'd already placed back in, but it's now all wired up and it's obviously working as you can see. There is the addition of another board now. So this was sitting on top here. I had the Calvert boards on here, as you can see, they're still in the house at the minute, much to Charlotte's delight. Um, and there was another spare Tim Horn baseboard on top, which was this one that I never got around to building. So I finally built that, and now it probably makes sense why I had that funny looking bit in the corner there. And uh, it's 
basically screwed in. It's, it's bolted in that side and there's a screw that goes through this side along with a single leg on the front. So I can take brake spit out completely and leave this behind. You just get rid of that. Because that's a bit annoying. Um, <laughs> yeah, so basically I can take the whole of brake spit out and this stays behind, bolted in. Um, so that works quite nice. The only thing I'm thinking of maybe doing now is because you see I've got this sort of sandwich piece here on both sides. That's the bit that lets me attach the boards at different heights to each other. Um, because obviously this board's dropped, that one's higher, blah, blah, blah. I'm thinking of maybe changing that, making a new one so that I can drop this board down again, even further. The reason for that is where the inclines come down, I could then continue the inclines down and go under here and have a bit of storage. Obviously, I'd have to do another little small lift out bridge underneath, which wouldn't be a problem. I'd just do something simple. And then we could go around the side there and have storage up against the wall. Because I've basically had a day of playing with the, with the layout. And obviously, I've only got one loop working, as you can see. Well, the branch one does work, but um, the pain is because of the way my layout is set up, obviously, it's an existing layout that I've then had to adapt the room for. Because of that, it's very limiting on what I can fit in here, which is why you'll notice there isn't a fiddle yard. There isn't actually a crossover apart from the one over there. So you can't go from one line to the other unless you're doing it there. Um, the only other way to do it would be come down the inclines and then there's gonna be a point here where they're going to a head shunt so that you can come back into the depot area. Of course, you could go past the head shunt and then you could come back the other way. So that's another um, reason for having this piece but yeah that's why I'm thinking maybe do a second level underneath I don't need all of this height obviously you can see I've got a wagon stacked up there at the minute so that's only a temporary thing anyway just because I needed the space under here to get under there so I could build a second level I mean it would be a tight squeeze to get in there because um, I'd want it as high up as I could get away with but I think it would be worth looking at doing what I could also do is incorporate a loop here. So I could have a, I could actually have a reverse loop underneath that comes back. So you can send the train all, all the way down, down the incline, down here, around the reverse loop and back on itself, obviously with an auto reversing module. Um, and then off of the loop, have the sidings. So that's what I'm sort of toying with at the minute. As usual, I'm uh, consulting Richard Hall. He's pretty good with track plans and stuff and he seems to think it might work. So we might give it a go. But yeah, um, I'll stop waffling on about that now. Um, and basically, you can see on this side, I've spent a bit of time putting backgrounds in. So this is just this three mil board that I use. It's some mount board sort of stuff. Um, you get it from B&Q. The problem with it is it is very weak, but because of that, it can flex around. So as you'll see on the board here, I actually curved it. So when that's all painted up and looks a bit like a sky, it won't look like it's got a nasty corner in, which looks a lot nicer. I've done the same on this layout up here um, to some extent, not that you can see it because someone's parked a tube train in the way. You can see it there, I curved the back seam round, not quite as much, but it really helps to get rid of those sharp corners. Um, on this side, I forgot to do it because I'm a numpty. So I'm going to have to make some sort of board here that will continue the background on. The only problem is I don't want to pull all of this out again to be able to access that side and screw it into the board. So I think I'm going to screw it onto the wall. But yeah, I just wanted to do some backgrounds to kind of frame the layout off and make it look a bit better. Obviously it looks a bit silly because it's all bare wood over there now, but it needs all ballast in and I need to put the other line in, the other main line. Um, but this is the paint I use to get the color. It's Monaco flat matte from B&Q, just a tester pot. And I've done all of that with it. And there's still a little bit left in the bottom. I don't think I'd get that whole lot done with it, but I might go and grab another one, of course. But you can see over the back there, I do have a Gage Master back scene, which I did kind of mess up on. I shouldn't have put that in. So that's gonna go. However, the color's not far off. And what I'm thinking of doing is getting the airbrush out with some white paint and doing some clouds and stuff. Um, as for the actual boards here, the lift out does now work. I mean, there are catches here, as you can see, they're quite easy. However, I need to think of another solution for the other side because the other side's got the same as this, but of course now I've got a back scene in there. You can't get your hand on, under there, uh, behind there, sorry. So the only way to actually latch it is go underneath. 
what I'm thinking of doing is actually building a latch system underneath so that you just reach your arm un oh, so you just reach your arm under and latch it like that because this being an exhibition board the left one I don't want to have a latch on there so I'm kind of thinking of ideas the only other thing is if I did fit a latch um, I could put it right on the end and then sort of cover it with a bit of scenery so it blends in but yeah we'll uh, have to have more of a think about that what I want to do but for now it works so we can play trains <laughs> Um, the back scene, also you'll see it's got a little notch out of, that's because when it folds that way, it sits against the wall and it was just damaging it being on a sharp corner because there's no sort of stop on the wall now because the background board is there. Um, the flip up board used to flip all the way back, whereas now that obviously gets in the way. But that's the reason for the little cutout. Um, it's not exactly ideal and I wouldn't want to have it really because it looks a bit rubbish, but it's a necessary evil. You see the board here is stepped back. This one is actually screwed to the right hand door. Reason for that, again, obviously I can't have it flush with this one because this needs to pivot backwards so it would get in the way. So you've got to have a gap for it to slide. And uh, I've made this one ever so slightly longer, with a sm very small overlap. So that when you look at it from here, I mean, this is the furthest right you'll be in the cabin the rest of the time you'll be over here or something so when you look at it from them sort of angles it does kind of look like it carries on so it does the job and uh, i can still open the doors no problem and then you'll see at the end there i've just continued the paint along the end of that wall just to sort of tie it all in but yeah pretty good i'm certainly happy and i've also painted it all as you can see as well in hague blue oh i just fell over something painted it in hague blue which is um Farrow and ball paint. We used it for our bedroom and I thought it was a lovely colour. So I won't use it in here. And you can see it just smartens it all up a lot. The other thing you will have noticed is, yes, I did in the end cut the side out of Harefield. So there's no going back now. And I'm shortly going to take the platforms up and redo those as well. The branch line is going to be extended. So the branch line track is going to be extended all the way to the edge of the baseboard. And then there'll be a little short section of track here, which I won't wire up that will just solely be for the buffer stop just to give me maximum room possible um i'll wire the light into the buffer stop but that's it as for trains they won't ever reach it so there's no need to actually wire the track in it'll just be there for show so yeah the branch line buffer stops will be about here and then obviously the station building around here somewhere and the station will end up here so the building will be right at the far end I am contemplating whether to get rid of the Art Deco buildings or not. If not, I'll just move them all up this way and uh, I'll put the footbridge somewhere else. I do like the footbridge though. It's, uh, it's got the right sort of vibe for what I want. My next job though, apart from getting this piece of track in and the track across the bridge there, I want to get rid of this big bit of foam and I've got another bit in the house which is just in the way so I'm going to get the foam cutter out and I'm going to start making the hilltop that's going to go in that corner and there's going to be a road leading up to it and all that sort of good stuff. Might even have it as a little return loop for if I ever do want to go down the route of a fallow car system. But yeah I need to get that in there and I need to also start doing it in this corner too. So the plan was to put, to obviously build it up in that corner behind and then have it sort of on an embankment coming down. So yeah, I want to get rid of the foam. So I think I'm going to do that next, as well as get this top level sorted for brake spear. But yeah, so that'll probably be a job for the next video. Um, I'm going to start doing that now, but I kind of want to get a video out because it's been a little while and I know a lot of you keep asking what's going on with it all. So I thought I'd do a little update. So finally, I've got my mojo back, which is nice. And uh, it'd be rude not to. So let's run some trains. <laughs>
So thanks for watching. Hopefully uh, you didn't find that too boring considering it is a lot of just talking through stuff rather than seeing me do things, but it's been nice to just crack on. I've got to thank um, James and Ross and Anthony for their help with this. Um, obviously it was a bit of a daunting thing because I had to take this whole layout out of this room and basically start again with all the framework and supports and that. But now that it's done, I'm a lot happier and it's given me the mojo to get back into it. And obviously being able to run trains is nice. This is the first time I've ever had a proper continuous loop um, in my life. I mean, I've had the old uh, tab uh, tabletop with some track chucked on it just for an afternoon, but nothing permanent like this. So this is the first time, especially since I've been properly into collecting trains and doing them up and stuff. So I'm very happy. I'm going to continue to have a play, run some stuff around, use the branch line, and then I'm going to crack on with some more work. But yeah, hopefully it won't be as long next time until I put a video out with some progress now that I've got some motivation back. So stay tuned and I'll see you soon. Bye.